As a quick recap, in part one, we prepped and squared our blank, drilled the airways, and removed a bit of the excess cherry to have an easier time when carving. In part two, we tackle carving and finishes. It being my first rodeo with any kind of carving, and especially with the Dremel, I actually started out with a straight edge engraving cutter. However, I switched to a circular high-speed cutting bit pretty quickly as the straight edge engraving bit really wasn't doing much in the way of progress. After that, we were off to the races carving out the shapes that sat furthest from the center of the blank. In this design, that meant the claws. I used the edge of the circular high-speed cutter in a kind of lateral left-to-right motion for many of the initial cuts. However, for more rounded shapes, I used a more vertical push-pull up-down motion, giving us nicer curves around the knuckles and in and around the claw. To get the outline of the brow, I simply dragged the circular high-speed cutter across the face in the shape of the brow, avoiding any major gouges while still marking where I'd need to cut. This being my first venture into carving, I kind of found myself jumping around from section to section. I'd dig out a part of a claw, then switch over to the beak, then jump to the brow line, and kind of just keep edging my way forward collectively. And I think originally this habit kind of developed out of a nervousness for messing up. I would make some progress and then maybe get hung up on exactly what cut to make, and then switch over somewhere else and start to dive in there. But what was really nice about this kind of fidgeting is that it kind of the whole pipe developed together. After gathering enough gumption in the larger shaped carving of the head and bowl area, I started to head toward the finer detail shaping of the beak. After tackling the beak, it was time to start roughing out the face.
Once I filled all the rough cuts were in, I switched to a spherical tipped engraving bit to start working on the finer details. I jumped in and went right for the eyes. Slowly, I just started drawing deeper and deeper ocular shapes just below the brow. It turns out I actually royally screwed up during rough cuts on the face. Where I wanted to place the raven's left eye, I had kind of gouged it a little bit too deeply and was never gonna get that perfectly spherical shape. At this point, I really had no idea how to solve this problem, so I kind of just ignored it. I went in, drew the same ocular shape that I did on the right side, and figured I'd work it out when it was time for finishes. I also use this engraving bit to really outline and define the nails of the claws as well as where the claws met the head. Then again with gumption gathered I also used it to hit the finer details on the beak as well. time adding or I guess removing layers with this bit to really refine these smaller detail shapes. Once the general shape was in place, it was time to use a conical high-speed cutter to get that bad boy smooth. This not only saved a ton of time when it came time to sand, but also gave me a really nice base to add in any extra textures. For instance, the feathers. I also used this bit to start honing in and shaping where the airway would meet the stem. I knew I had to be really careful here because one small slip of the Dremel and I could effectively ruin how well this pipe would smoke. Once I got it nice and smooth with the Dremel, it was time for the first bout of sanding. Again, I did this to give myself a nice base to add in texture. With a nice smooth shape, I switched back to the spherical tipped engraving bit and got to work adding the quote unquote feathers. Another round of sanding and we'd be ready to die, both literally and figuratively. As 
as ravens are black, I used a black leather dye to stain the pipe. Because I wanted a more opaque stain on the pipe, I opted out of cutting it with denatured alcohol. Instead, I went for kind of a denatured alcohol bath where I used a dampened rag to wipe down the entire pipe after all the finishes were in place. This gave me the more opaque look without having to worry about the leather dye wiping off on the smoker's hand once the pipe was lit. pretty proud of my waxing and buffing jerry rig. <laughs> Although if I could go back in time, I would have opted for the softer linen buffing pads. That said, this wool one really did the trick when it came to clearing off excess leather dye, so I'm counting it as a lucky mistake. Using carnauba wax, I primed the pad and then began to buff out the pipe. buff complete, it was time for the final photo shoot. Thanks so much for watching you guys. I had so much fun on this project. I definitely think there's at least two or three more pipes in my future for sure. Um, if you're interested to see how I drilled the airways, prepped the blank, got it all ready for carving, that's all in part one, so feel free to check it out. Um, and I love hearing from you guys, so comments, questions, concerns, whatever you got, toss them in the comment sections below. I am all ears. And finally, I've got a lot of really fun projects in queue that I'm really, really excited about. A couple from stateside, and then Africa is coming up so soon, you guys. So I'm already plotting and scheming projects for when we get all settled in Africa. So. Stay tuned, like, subscribe. If nothing else, it's gonna be an adventure.